by Sunbelt Rentals. Bradford Highlanders come into play tonight with a record of 10 and 16 this year. They are 6 and 8 in the Big South. The Highlanders have won three straight coming into play today. Four of the Longwood Lancers, same starting five as they've had most of this season. They're 21 and 6 this year, 13 and 1 in the Big South, and they've been almost impossible to beat at home here on Jerome Kersey Court at Willett Hall. It's a turnover on the opening possession for the Lancers. Looks like another sold out or near it crowd here at Willett Hall tonight. Fans have picked up on this incredible run their hometown Lancers have been on. This is going to be a really exciting game. Both teams spread the floor really well. They both have a, a lot of skilled players. They can hound the ball, shoot the ball. So it, it really looks like a mirror matchup here. Jeffers, who we just talked about, takes the first shot of the night for Radford. It comes up short. And Justin Hill has it tipped out. It's out of bounds. Last touched by Jeffers. So the Lancers will keep the ball. Student section behind us. Justin, it is packed full, loud. I can barely hear you. Yeah, it's really exciting here, and the way that these two teams play is only going to add to it. Hill works it around to Wilkins and gets it back. The all-conference guard a year ago works it out to Jesper Granlin. Thought about a three, instead drives and leaves the floater a little short. And the Highlanders control the board. It's Josiah Jeffers, the senior out of Burlington, North Carolina. Nice drive down the right side of the lane, high off the glass, and no, Watson's there to get the board. And here's what you talked about, Justin. Lancers, quick defensive rebound, and they're off on the break. And you can see the ball right now is popping. Both teams, they want, they want to play at a frenetic pace, and they, they both really handle the ball well, and, and they want to make the defense move side to side and try to open up some of these double gaps to drive. Shot clock is down to eight. Hill off the screen from Watson to give and go. Watson couldn't handle it cleanly, and the Highlanders come away with it. Here's Radford off on the break. Jeffers leads it, and he'll wait for his teammates to catch up. Resets the offense. Just about two minutes into the start of tonight's game. Clock rolling down near 18. Sean Williams backing toward the basket. Kicks back outside for Artrice Stapleton. Eight seconds to shoot. Stapleton guarded by Granlin. Works it underneath. Jeffers is all by himself, and he's got the first two points of the night. And expect to see that all night. The, both defenses are very aggressive. You're going to see a lot of switching. You're going to see some traps, some hard hedging. And with that, sometimes there's going to be miscommunications. So Radford strikes first tonight. Watson kicks it out to Wilkins. Granlin, Hill, they go all the way around the outside of the circle for a deep two shot up by Deshaun Wade, and he's fouled. Deshaun Wade, the senior out of Virginia Beach, averages 12 points a game this season. There'll be some nights where he'll go off and put up a lot more than that. Yeah, and he's someone that can really heat up fast. You know, you don't want to send a player like him to the, to the free throw line uh, early in the game. You know, he's someone that can easily put three, four three-pointers together. Good from outside, usually good from the line. He just airballed that foul shot. Deshaun Wade's an 80% free throw shooter this year, and he left that one a little short. Yeah, in the first two and a half minutes, you can see the offense a little bit slow to catch up to some of the defense, so I would attribute that to really everybody's rust right now. That is one of the most reliable free throw shooters in the league. Airballing a free throw, not something you normally see from Deshaun Wade. The Senior, he went to the Miller School, then off to East Carolina University in Greenville. Now here in Farmville. Puts the second one up, left that one short as well. So an 0 for a trip to the line for Deshaun Wade. Yeah, I wouldn't expect to see too many of those for, for Wade. He's, he's a terrific player. And you can see right here, there's a lot of movement, especially, you know, off the ball for both teams. They want to look and exploit these one-on-one -on -one matchups. Looking down low for Kyrie Walker. Backing down against Incarium. He misses Incarium. Strong with the rebound. Defender tried to take it out. and Incarium held on to it. Wilkins backs it back out. That combo of Wilkins and Hill. They had a, we've had a big run over the last few weeks. Leslie Incarium. Nice move. Swims underneath. And puts it in for two. This game yeah, is was, tied. That was great footwork right there. Incarium has done a great job this year of, of getting his man up and being able to finish off balance. One of the Big South's top bench players gets good momentum coming in as the sixth man for the Lancers. Defending on this try, and it's up and in through the contact for Kyrie Walker. And Radford goes back in front for two. Here's Justin Hill. 
Looking underneath, tried to feed and carry him through it a little long, kept in bounds by Radford and collected by Kyrie Walker. A turnover for Longwood, a little sloppy for the Lancers here in their final home game of the year. Yeah, you'll look, you'll see Radford, they're doing a lot of downstream uh, on the weak side there, and that's really with the empty corner, it's putting a whole lot of stress on Longwood to help. Three-point try off the mark from Kyrie Walker, and it bounces out of bounds. Back to the Lancers. That'll take us to a time. New River Valley, southwestern Virginia. And he's got his Highlanders with an early 4-2 lead with 15.45 to play in the opening half. Jordan Perkins, the senior guard, gets it around to Hill. Watson backing down, and he's double-teamed. That's to kick it back out for Hill. Tries a three and got it. Justin Hill gets on the board, and the Lancers have the lead. Yeah, and that's something he's really done a good job of here in the second half of the season is hitting some of these, these key three balls. He's such a tremendous driver that sometimes you forget how well he shoots it. He's got his first points of the night, and he's got his Lancers in front by three. Shot clock down to 10. Stapleton looking for some space. Tries to feed underneath. Got a nice dump down low. And put up and in by Shaquan Jules. Yeah, Radford did a good job there of really emptying out the side. And because of that, that allowed Jules to be able to get inside a position. A couple of nice passes into the post. Some entry passes we've seen from the Highlanders tonight. Ramblin thought about a three again. He's not pulled the trigger yet tonight. Typically, he'll fire away from outside. Hill down to Perkins, who puts up the floater too long. But it works as a nice feed to Zach Watson off the glass. He's always Johnny on the spot. Six seven senior forward puts Longwood back in front. Seven six. In the corner for Joseph, who tries the three and he knocks it down. Terry on Joseph, the sophomore, puts Radford ahead by two. And if you watch Radford, the way they move with their fours and their fives, they, they don't just typically screen and roll. There's so much movement, they interchange so well that it's really hard to close out in the shooters. A little too far trying to feed Zach Watson. And it's out of bounds, another Lancer turnover. That is the fourth turnover tonight for Longwood, none yet for Radford. Nine seven lead for the Highlanders. 13.55 to play in the first half. You can see this circle right here with the four and the five. It really makes it difficult to, to be accountable for who you have to close out on. A deep contested three. Mangum tried to fall at the end of that play. They say play on. He took a little bit of a dive. After firing that shot up, Wilkins to the corner for Wade. He tries a three and misses everything. Wade's a little off the mark tonight. Perkins keeps it alive, drives right through the defense, up and in, it's tied at nine. And that's one of the great things about having such strong guards for Longwood is they can, they can just fight through some of these box out or attempted box outs for offensive rebounds. There's a warning issued to Mangum after that play. Didn't hear what the warning was. Did you see it? I did not. It looks like maybe he may have deflected the ball. Delay of, delay of game. Yeah, I think it was, must have been what it was. 13-18 left to play. 9-9 game. In-state rivals. Two teams that have crossed paths in the Big South a lot in recent years. It's been mostly Radford with the upper hand in this series. Highlanders have won 17 out of the 22 meetings, uh, the 21 meetings between these two teams. But the Lancers won the most recent time they played down in Radford at the Devon Center. Shot clock is at four from the corner. No. What a game that was earlier this year between these two teams. Lancers look to have it under control, led by seven points in the final minute, but Rashawn Williams hit back to back threes to close it to one. After a couple of free throws from Wilkins, as they look to get the clock fixed, Wilkins in that game made a couple free throws to make it a three-point game again, and then Drayvon Mangum hit a three-pointer at the buzzer to force overtime, but the Lancers took off in the extra period and outscored the Highlanders 14-6 to to get the win. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly a little surprised. Uh, you know, Longwood typically starts off 
They're pretty hot, especially shooting the ball. Uh, they had a couple, couple air balls here early on that I don't expect to continue. Harris Nichols having some words with the officials after the reset of the shot clock back to 17 seconds. Inbound pass to Leslie and Carrier. Meet up mine to put it on the deck. Drives to the basket. Nice move. Up and in. Just wouldn't drop. Yeah, you like to see that one right there. You got to finish that one. That's some athleticism from the 6-7 forward. But no points to show for it. Highlanders looking to go back in front. You can see Radford really wants to get the ball going east-west just to open up those driving lanes. Joseph. Tipped away, kept alive by Radford. Two seconds to shoot. Deep three-pointer. Bangs it down. Josiah Jeffers from way downtown at the buzzer puts Radford back in front. Yeah, when you're hot, those things seem to just go in for you. Jeffers has five points tonight. He averages nine and a half a game this season. He had 17 in the win over high point on Saturday. Bramlin from the wing. Inside the circle, around the other side for Deshaun Wade. Bramlin fires this time, and he hits. Just for Bramlin for three. It's tied again. And, and you got to know that those are going to fall for Longwood. They're just too good of a shooting team. And I look for you know, them to keep on shooting. No matter how many you miss or make, you got to take those. 36% three-point shooting team this year. That's third best in the Big South. They're now two out of three from outside tonight. Radford trying for another one. Too strong. Might have been deflected by Granlin. And the Lancers are off in transition. Perkins, the senior guard, slows it down. Finds Wade, who plows through a defender and gets called for a charge. This is a Longwood team that went 12 and 17 last year. Finished 10 and 10 in the Big South. Thanks to a strong run at the end of the season. Having a year unlike any season they've had in this program's D1 history. Local community around Farmville has taken notice. Students around campus have taken notice. Energy in this building has been spectacular, and it's on display again tonight. Speaking of on display, Rashawn Williams showing off his good three-point shooting, a 34% three-point shot on the season, and he buries one. Yeah, Radford, they call so many mismatches with what they do with their four and their five. Justin Hill, one of the best distributors in the league, just got a nice feed over to Zach Watson to bring the Lancers back within one. And if you watch both of these teams, they do a good job of creating so much motion with their offense. And then they'll get an empty, they'll get an empty corner and run that ball screen to where there's no help. And it just opens everything up for the five men. Spin down the lane, tough shot, no good. Off the mark for our two Stapleton. DA Houston in the game. Some of the younger players on the floor right now. Houston and Jelani Darden for Longwood. A couple of seniors, Watson. And Wilkins, Darden nearly had it stolen. Ten to shoot. Justin Hill trying to make something happen. Finds Darden on the baseline, and he stepped out of bounds. And you can start to see some of these, just the difference in the way that each team plays. Longwood has been so good this year because they have strong guards that can get into the paint, whereas Rafford, on the other hand, they're, they're very quick. So it's offsetting the strength with the quickness. So it's going to be a, a great battle today. Radford's won three straight. Coming into play tonight, they beat Hampton on the road, picked up a win over Campbell at home, and then closed out their home slate on Saturday, senior day against High Point. Nice step back jumper, but no good for Josiah Jeffers. Hill pushes the tempo, goes through contact, and he's fouled on the way up by Kyrie Walker. And just as you saw what we talked about in the pregame, when Longwood gets those all, uh, defense rebounds, rather, and Justin Hill can just, just put it into overdrive and get downhill and attack the basket in transition. It's, it's almost just too easy for Longwood. Justin Hill's a strong case to be near the head of the All-Big South team this year. A lot of talented guards in this league. Hill was an All-Big South freshman last year. And the freshman team this year helping lead this Longwood team to the North Division title. And a win tonight would lock up the Big South regular season title overall. 16-15, Hill sinks them both. The sophomore from Texas has the Lancers back ahead by a point.
And again, there you see Longwood, um, rather, Radford rather, will run their motion offense just to empty out that corner. And it really is difficult to get a close out. Sean Williams buried that three. Missed from Houston, but he got his own rebound. Darden fakes left, goes right, runs into a wall, kicks it back up top. Houston puts up a 19-foot jumper and buries that to tie the score at 18. Yeah, that shot's a lot more difficult than you think it is when you're when you're going so hard at the basket and have to stop, and then you find out how wide open you are. That's that's way more difficult than it seems. These two teams neck and neck through the first 12 minutes. 18-18. Jeffers drives down the lane, throws it up, and a foul is called uh, against Granlin, who looked like he tried to stand in for a charge. And that will send Jeffers to the free throw line. Second foul against Longwood. Two fouls on each team so far in the first 12 minutes. Griff Aldrich, the Lancers fourth year head coach, coaching him up from the sideline tonight. Been getting a lot of national attention with the building of this building up of this program over the first few years of his head coaching career. The shot rolls in for Jeffers. And, and as they should, Longwood's really made a splash here with the, not only their their record and success, but also just in the way they play. It's, a, it's very exciting, and you can see the, the fans are, are all in it. Uh, so when you can not only match the success, but it's also enjoyable to watch, then you're going to have a lot of people talking about you. Building a culture here in Farmville. Both free throws good for Josiah Jeffers. On the other side, Bradford led by Darius Nichols, former... WVU guard who has been able to coach. He's been able to play and coach under some of the, the best names in college basketball over the last uh, 15 or so years since he was a student, since he was a student athlete. Of course, played at West Virginia under John Beeline and Bob Huggins. He's coached under, he's a three-pointer from Wade off the mark. He's coached under Mike Young, Mike White. Here's another try from outside. Grandlin, no. And a lot of times you see those scrambles right there benefit the shooter. And with the way that Radford overhelps so much, that that's just going to happen for Longwood tonight. Radford with a two-point lead in the ball, 17 and a half to play in the opening half. And you can see this, the Radford, as, with as much as they're moving, is giving Longwood some issues with the communication piece. Well, two seconds left to shoot, gets it up at the buzzer, and that's a shot clock violation. And for Bob Huggins, he's also coached under Mike White at uh, Florida and Mike Young at Wofford. Of course, Mike Young now at Virginia Tech. And uh, they've all had some positive things to say about him. We called Darius Nichols one of the rising stars in the college coaching ranks. Yeah, and Darius has done a great job as, from the very early on from G8 West Virginia coaching in North Kentucky, Wofford, et cetera. Uh, he's, he's, a guy, he's a guy from Radford that uh, still has a, pays a lot of attention to detail and is one of the more genuine people that you're ever going to meet in college basketball. Strong take by Brian Hart, the Hampton native. Along with, or pardon me, Radford's got a four-point lead. Hill swings it up top for Deshaun Wade. And just this frenetic pace that both teams are playing is there's going to be there's going to be some open shots so the defense just has to keep on holding on on both sides of the ball well, it's the seventh turnover of the game for the lancers and the opening half just two so far for radford they've held on to the ball for the most part turnaround jumper in the post no rebound fought for and grabbed by deshaun wade wilkins tries a three got it Isaiah Wilkins, he had a career high, 25 points on Saturday against Hampton. Hadn't taken a shot yet tonight until that one, and he buries a three-pointer. And he's a guy that always seems to step up when Longwood needs a bucket. The senior who started his career at Virginia Tech. It's been a year, a couple years at Wake Forest. Now here with Longwood, second try for Radford, a fresh 20-second shot clock. Josiah Jeffers letting the clock roll down to 10 seconds. Starts the offense with it at six, going against Jordan Perkins. Three to shoot, blows right by the defenders, and Rashawn Williams drops it down to pull Radford's lead, push Radford's lead back to three. 
And sometimes that's what happens when an offensive team pulls it out, gets organized. Defense is a little slow to react. Wilkins driving down the lane, a feed to and carry him, and he got blocked. Out of bounds, last touch by Radford. That a nice defensive stand on that play by Mangum. That was very impressive, and carry him usually finishes those. Substitutions for both teams as we get close to the under four timeout. Yeah, both also defenders stepped over. It was Mangum who got, or excuse me, Williams who got in front and had the block there. Rashawn Williams stops and carry him. He loves to try and take the rim down when he gets a chance. Hill on the inbound. Ends up with Wade. Five minutes to play in the opening half. Three-point Radford lead. Watson fouled on the way up. And you can see what both these teams are doing, especially with their fours and their fives. There's there's so much movement. There's so much that, that the forwards on each team have to, so much ground they have to cover. They have to help on the guards, but then they have to close out on these shooters. And both teams can shoot the ball really well from their forward position. So it opens up so many more opportunities for the fives on these slips. First free throw rolls in for Zach Watson. 82% free throw shooter. Take a look at that last play again. Nice feed from Granlin and then Watson. That is, it could have been a foul on that play on Mangum as well. It ended up going. I thought I'd think it went on Williams. Let's, uh, let's double check that. Yes, it did. It went on Williams. Might have been fouled twice on the same drive. Yeah, you just have to finish finish through these. And both teams, they play physical, so you're going to get hit a couple times. Bradford, lead down to one. Turnover, Wade takes it away. Feeds it up the floor for Justin Hill. Lost his foot, but he'll let the rest of his teammates come back and catch up with him. A nice job by Hill to save that from being a turnover. And now Wade has the ball knocked out of his hands, and it's out of bounds. It'll go to Radford. Yeah, the intensity that both of these teams are playing with is at, a, is at an all-time level. They credit Radford for sprinting back, not, not conceding just a simple layup. And also credit Justin Hill for not making a, you know, trying to rush a silly play and making sure that he maintained control of the ball. R.T. Stapleton poked the ball out of Deshaun Wade's hands and gives the Highlanders another possession. Tournament for number eight in the first half for Longwood, a team that has the best assist to turnover ratio in the league. Guarded well by Granlin, and a late foul is called. That was a great box out by Houston right there. A foul called on the rebound try against Radford. Called against Shaquan Jules. Yeah, this is late season basketball. March is coming, and you look out on the floor right now for both teams. The pace of this game, the intensity of this game, and there's some hands-on hips already. This has been a, an intense first 16 minutes. And credit and credit both teams offenses for that. They just get so much movement and they cause so many closeouts. They cause so much uh, communication, miscommunication. Houston to Hill. Down to the elbow for Perkins. Goes back up top. Hill's all by himself. Knocks down the three-pointer. Standing on the logo. Justin Hill hits his second three and Longwood's back in front. And Radford shows some zone there, so I'm interested to see how how long they'll stick with that. Fifteen to shoot, drive, and take it away by Zach Watson. Perkins behind the back dribble. We'll slow things down, and it's out of bounds. That'll take us to the under four. There's not going to be a lot of empty seats in this place in its final couple of years. Yeah, they they really just turned everything around here, and you can just see the just the excitement they have on the floor, the level of players they have on the floor. It's really just a, just a new culture completely. Perkins out for Houston, tries a three, too strong, and a rebound ripped down by Brian Hart. 26-24, three minutes to play. Tried to feed it. Nobody home. A late cut by Kyrie Walker. Ends up 
out in the corner and a three-point shot is knocked down by Brian Hart. And you can see Rafford just causing so, many, so much confusion with these closeouts with that one four high set. Granlin for the answer. Got it. Second three of the night for Jesper Granlin. You can just tell he's warming up. He, he missed a couple early on, but he's definitely found his touch. He's shooting 38% from three-point range this year. Granlin is two for four tonight. He's hit his last two tries. Two minutes and 15 seconds till halftime. Strong drive down the right side by Rashawn Williams. He ties the score back up at 29. And, that, and he's had a couple of those, and I'll look for him to continue to just finish off of those strong drives. Perkins out to Houston. D.A. Houston goes off the screen, swings the pass around to Jordan Perkins. A lot of contact. Spins and creates some space. And Jordan Perkins puts Longwood back ahead by two. And that was really good defense, just better offense. He's able to get creative and make some space. Thought he might dish the ball off a couple of different times, but he held on to it. And you can see both teams, they're, they're so good defensively that it takes a lot of work on the offensive end just to get any type of open look. Hustle offensive rebound grabbed by Kyrie Walker in a second try. Fresh 20 seconds for Radford. Here in the final minute of the opening half. Hart for three, no. Gramlin's got the rebound. Justin Hill. Hands in the air, wondering where the whistle was, but he got the two points anyway. It's a four-point Longwood lead. Yeah, that's a tough bucket right there, and he's a tough bucket getter. And credit to Justin Hill right there. In the first half, he's knocked down a couple of three-point shots. Bradford on what might be its final offensive possession of the first half. Jeffers with nine seconds to shoot. Takes the pass and drives, and once again, wide open under the basket. Gets the feed there for Shaquan Jules, and Radford's back within two. And that's a great confidence booster to set the tone for the second half for Radford. Justin Hill with 10 seconds left in the first half. Nearly has it picked out of his hands by Jeffers. Drives down the lane, kicks it out for Deshaun Wade. His three is no good. And as the ball's tipped around, that old two teams played a classic in Radford earlier this season. Longwood came away with a win in that game. In fact, the only Big South loss this season for the Lancers came a couple weeks ago against North Carolina A&T. Radford comes into play tonight with three straight wins, looking to make it four in a row, trying to find some momentum for first-year head coach Darius Nichols heading into conference tournament play. Shot clock down to 10 seconds. Got to make something happen. That inside for Walker. Off the mark, way to high rebound brought down. Once again, that's great defense by Longwood right there, forcing him late into the shot clock. Skip pass for Granlin, open for three, and he's got his third three-point shot buried tonight. And that's the offense that Longwood wants to play right there. They don't want to get in these deep shot clock situations. They want to score out of their transition to secondary. Granlin's got nine. He's the second leading scorer for Longwood behind Justin Hill's ten first-half points. And you can see Radford, everything they do comes out of this 1-4 high set. And they'll run Iverson cut over top. So it's it's difficult to know exactly what's coming until it's already there. Now Wilkins caught for a foul in his first of the night. Not a ton of fouls for either team in the first half. Nobody had more than one. Doesn't mean it hasn't been a physical game. This is one where the officials have held their whistles. Yeah. Oh. Overall, the officials did a great job allowing both teams to play and allowing the players to decide what happens on the court. A turnover for Radford. Highlanders only had four turnovers in the first half. Longwood's largest lead of the night, in fact, the largest lead for either team in tonight's game, five points. 
Gramlin tries for another three. He's filling it tonight. Fourth three ball of the night for Jesper Gramlin. He's got 12. And the Lancers have their largest lead. They're now up by eight. Yeah, you can just see this couple of couple of stagnant or or offensive possessions for, for Raffers really added to Longwood's energy. Opening two minutes of the first of the second half have been all Lancers. Shot clock's at five. Jeffers has to throw one up. Buries it. Jeffers with the three. Big shot for Radford. And that's what you need your, your, your best offensive players to do. Jeffers is the leading scorer on this team. 9.3 points per game. And then a clumsy turnover for Longwood. Sean Wade's not quite looked himself tonight. Yeah, you can tell he's, he's doing a good job of, of pushing through and playing, uh, playing hard. But you can just tell he's, he's struggling a little bit. But I'm sure he'll turn it around. Ken, you can see Radford, they start off every play the same for the most part, and it's really difficult to tell what they're getting into out of it. Jeffers over to the wing, another three try short. Offensive rebound and rolled in by Rashun Williams. Three point lead. Bradford scored five in a row. Carry him through. Contact off the mark. Thought he was fouled. No whistle. Williams on the defense and the rebound. Yeah, and he might have got touched a little bit right there, but that's, again, that's a play you just got to score on. Three ball from the corner. He buries it. Tie game off the three from Brian Hart. There's a quick answer for Radford. And it, Charlotte's Bojangles Coliseum. Tickets. And a bit of information can be found now at BigSouthSports.com slash CLTChamps. Big plans to come support your team in Charlotte March 1st through 6th. These two teams will be there. The Lancers will be either the number one or number two seed, depending on how these next few days go. Jordan Perkins called for an offensive foul. Griff Aldridge, he disagrees. And that's one of those things we talked about earlier where Radford has the quickness to stay in front of Longwood because they're such a good defensive team. And right there, quickness beat the man to the spot. Bradford's on an 8-0 run to erase what was a 39-31 Longwood lead. It was the largest lead for either team in this game. Bradford answered quickly. Grandlin's got a steal. Nearly turned it back over. Perkins gets it back to Grandlin. The leading scorer now for Longwood tonight. He's got 12. And a foul is called. And credit Granlin right there for not trying to make too much out of that. He did a good job with the steal, of course, but a lot of times you see guys, that they get to push the ball in half court the, or in the full court. They're not used to it, and they try to do a little bit too much, but that was a great heady play by him. Season high, 12 points tonight for Granlin. All of them have come from outside. Hill finds Leslie and carry him off the glass. And the Lancers move back in front by two. And carry him. It's good to see him getting one. He's had a couple down there that he's uh, struggled with early on tonight. But also the third assist of the night for Justin Hill. And a quick answer back at the other end by Jeffers. Houston went to the floor. Jeffers went by him. You can see Longwood's, they're doing a good job of getting so much movement north-south, as you call it, just from the perimeter to the basket, just cutting, cutting, cutting. But it's opening up some of these three-pointers. Bunch of subs ready to check in for both teams. The next dead ball. We roll down here, 15 to play. Jeffers with Houston on him. Hart for three. Left a little short, and Carrium's got the rebound. Hill's leading the charge. And this is what Longwood wants to do. This makes everything so much easier when you can do that. Blew right by the defender, but missed the open layup. Hill does that. He'll sneak around the defender. They think he's going to back out and reset. And he gets low and gets right by him. And just to credit how well Hill's playing, that's his first miss of the night. He's had a perfect game from the field until that shot. 
Three-pointer made by Williams. And that's his third, I believe. He's, he's really shooting it well. He's got 12 points tonight. So I guess they said it was a two. They just caught up. He's got 15, excuse me. 15 points tonight for Williams. Closing in on his season high. Hill puts it off the back of the iron and carry him, grabs the rebound in the second try for the Lancers. Perkins, the floater, short, and carry him, tries to uh, shot so he can't just shoot in rhythm. He's got 15. He's closing in on his season high. His Highlanders are in front by three. You see, Radford cut so hard that they make things difficult on Longwood. But Longwood, to their credit, they're doing a really good job of they're always there for a closeout. They're always overhelping. Radford deep in the shot clock again. Look at the basket for Hart. Couldn't finish the drive, and then it's kept by Longwood and a foul call under the basket. Pardon me, kept by Radford and a foul call. Yeah, I think they're calling that one right there on the floor. I'm not sure that was that was on Granlin though. That's who they called it on. They called it on Zach Watt or oh. me, yeah, they called it on Zach Watson. Mm -hmm. Shot from the corner falls. Forty-six forty-one with thirteen and a half left. And Wade lost the ball. It's out of bounds and back to Radford. Yeah, you could, you could tell right there, like he was looking to get downtown, uh, get downhill and try to make something happen. Sometimes you just have those games. It happens to everybody. A five point Longwood, uh, pardon me, a five point Radford lead. Their largest lead tonight. The run continues for the Highlanders. They have scored a 15 to 2 run. They'll keep the possession out of bounds with three seconds to shoot. That was great deflection by Wade getting over top of a bigger player, refusing to give an inch. And I have to get a shot off quickly. Three seconds to shoot. Jumper from the corner. Ball on the floor, and Wade's got it. Perkins with numbers. Wilkins, who hasn't shot a ton tonight, gets it out to Wade, trying to find his rhythm, and he buries a three. That's a great shot by Wade, and that's, that's what you want to see. It's good to see one fall for him, because he's playing great on the defensive end. Brings it back to a two-point game. First points tonight for Deshaun Wade. Radford lead down to two. Nice drive and layup. And there you see this long one. They're so aggressive defensively that sometimes it can bite them, especially when Watson shows and opens up that driving lane. Granlin takes the shot, pulls in from about 15, a little short. See, Raffers, you're going to get a little more deliberate. They want to get a little deeper in that shot clock. Looking underneath. Nice block by Watson. A foul, probably. 11.44 left. Quick inbound pass to Mangum. And a foul is whistled. Some contact underneath. And Incarium's on the floor. A foul is called on Incarium. Off the ball. We saw a handful of those fouls called with Incarium getting tangled up with defenders under the basket in the game against uh, against Hampton over the weekend. And I'm not so sure if that one that was a foul on Incarium. That, that looked like both players just battling. With Ten seconds to shoot. Gotta make something happen. Stapleton takes it himself. No. And then Carrium turns it over. Stapleton gets it back, and then he's called for another foul. It's his second foul tonight, but his second one in just a few minutes. 
and credit to Stapleton for sticking with it right there, but but also Granlin, when he got switched off on Stapleton, he did a good, great job of, of keeping defensive integrity, staying low, moving his feet, and forced Stapleton into a tough shot. And get it in under the baseline, a fresh 20 seconds after the foul call and the turnover. Lost his footing, Mangum goes down, a foul, or a whistle is called, and a travel, not a foul, excuse me, a travel call. Yeah, he just slipped on a slick spot right there. We'll get out and get that cleaned up. Four-point lead for Radford, long over the chance to carve into it. Uh, bring it back to a one-possession game. You can see Raffer, they're doing such a great job of showing those ball screens that's kind of clogging up everything for the one. Granlin with a take on, high off the glass. He's really playing well tonight. Adds to his season high. And he's shooting above 50% in the process, so he's, he's scoring well, but it's, it's very efficient. Him driving down the lane and drops it in over him. Mangum pushes the lead back to four. That was good contact by Mangum, too. A big strong finish. Back and forth they go. Two point game again. It's 50 to 48. Crowd making some noise. You can see Radford, the, the more or less probing right now. They're trying to, they're trying to attack Granlin off the off the handoffs of the ball screens. Three pointer way off. Houston's got the board. Clock rolling under ten minutes. And Karen's fighting for everything he's got. He's trying. He wants this one. Physical underneath. Goes back out for Hill. Five to shoot. Hill through contact. Misses the shot, but he's fouled. And heading to the line for two shots. And you can see both teams are, are almost hunting for that, that switch from the four or the five to step out and guard one of their guards. You can see uh, Radford's attacking Granlin. And then Longwood, in turn, they're attaching Jules. It's another sellout crowd announced at Willett Hall tonight. Full house. Place is about as loud as it's been all night in that moment, that last defensive possession for the Lancers. There's some Radford fans here tonight who've made the trip as well, making some noise on that hill free throw. How far is the drive from Radford to here? What, about three hours? Yeah, it's about three hours. It's pretty much a straight shot, but Radford, they traditionally travel well. Highlanders down in the New River Valley, a little west of here. Trip down 460. Hill buries both foul shots. This game's tied at 50 with nine and a half minutes left. And this is the chess match right here you want to see. You know, both coaches are relieving the impact on this game. Stapleton double team. Williams for three all by himself. Stapleton tracks down the offensive rebound. Tipped by Perkins out of bounds, and it'll go back to Radford. And you can just tell that Longwood, they're just loaded up right now. They, they want to for, force you kind of deep down in that corner so they can get deflections and get out in the fast break. 16 to shoot when they inbound. Fans right on top of the media table, right behind where Hart's inbounding right now. Crowd and rising to its feet and making some noise. And they're letting him hear it. 50 all, under nine minutes left. Three, he don't think he knows about it. He's got to get it up. Shot clock expires, deep three, hits the rim, avoids the violation, but Hill's got the rebound. Nice spin move for Justin Hill. Through traffic, has it stripped out of his hands. And balls on the floor, tie up. The possession error will keep it with Longwood. 
A game like this right here, the, the MVP might end up being up being the the guy with the mop because the floor, everybody's diving on the floor, there's sweat everywhere. And you can see we've had a couple turnovers and a couple fouls in the last few minutes because of the moisture on the floor. 50 to 50 with 839 left. It's a good deep post. Perkins down to Watson through contact Watson off the glass oh he couldn't get it to go crowd was ready to erupt but he couldn't finish does get the foul and he heads the line for two shots and that was a great job of getting contact by Watson uh, he was very patient and then fought through the double team actually by Radford so that was a very strong move by him 50 50 Watson with a chance to break the tie. And he points Saturday against Hampton. Great foul shooter, 81% this year. Seven points now for Zach Watson. Longwood back to the lead. Big run by Radford that gave the Highlanders the lead. Now five straight points for Longwood. It ended up being a 19 to 7 Radford lead. A 19 to 7 Radford run, pardon me. And now the Lancers with a counter, and it's a two point game 52 50 with 8.20 left. And you can see Longwood's doing such a good job of extending their defense so well. They're so aggressive on any type of exchange, whether it be handoff or dribble, dribble drive. Williams up over Watson. A lot of contact, a lot of feet moving around. Nope, whistles blown. A tough two points for Williams to tie the score at 52. Isaiah Wilkins coming off a career day on Saturday. Goes back out for the senior Perkins. Deep two-pointer for Jordan Perkins. Puts Longwood back in the lead. That was great discipline by him. He, he could have... He could have shot the three. He was open, but he settled for a better, more on balance shot. And now Longwood's ratcheting up the, the pressure. It's kind of taking Radford a little bit out of their offense. What a take by Kyrie Walker. Ties it back up. Man, this is about as good of a game as we've seen all year in this building, and there have been a lot of good ones. Back and forth. Nobody's been able to pull away too far. Every time one team does something, the opponent answers. Perkins stays with it. Wade down low for Watson. Shot clock's at five. Watson to Perkins. Wilkins has to get off a shot. Throws up the three, and he beats the shot clock buzzer to put Longwood in front. Yeah, that was a great shot by Wilkins. You can see. Because everybody can play such high-level defense, everybody has to also be able to hit shots. And you, you're seeing that the, the more the defense is amped up, the, the higher the offense has to play just in order to get a decent shot. Foul called against you. They've, they've kind of extended for, for Radford, but that's really the only difference. They Both teams play very similar styles and aggressive half-court man-to-man defense. And they're both very guard skill oriented. So it's just been really good seeing the back and forth for two evenly matched teams. RT Stapleton goes one for two from the foul line. Back to a two point game. Sold out crowd at Willett Hall for the final home game of the season for the Lancers. They did senior day on Saturday over the weekend, but getting one more chance to see their team at home this year. As you can see, Radford's out here with a, it looked like a 3-2 matchup. Wade misses the three. R.T. Stapleton driving on Hill. Lost the basketball, it's out of bounds. And they'll keep it with Radford. Yeah, I think that right there may have, Radford may have gotten away with one. And none of the officials had the positioning down to see where that went out off of the defender. Yeah, that's part of, one. part of the game trying to keep up with these 20-year-old 
<laughs> 20 year olds running down the court. That's why, that's why you, you always tell your team you got to win by 10 to win by two. Stapleton, nice speed down low for Jules, up and over the defender, Granlin. And he's got the game tied at 57. And that was a great just execution for Rafford right there, staying with it. And again, you can see that Rafford's doing a great job communicating right here with all the cutters going through the middle of that zone. Hill to Granlin. Back to Hill, left side of the lane. Get some space. Deshaun Wade, wide open, hits the three. Deshaun Wade's second three ball tonight. The Lancers are back in front, 60 to 57. And credit Wade for he started off, he started off with uh, Ofer, and then had you know a few turnovers, but his defense stayed the same. His intensity and his attitude stayed the same. He did a great job. And now he's his last two threes, huge threes, might I add. Stapleton. Pops back, knocks it down. Back to one. Great job of Stapleton staying on balance there, being able to stop on a dime. Again, you see the 3-2 zone right here again. Hill makes some space, looks for Granlin. Three-pointer, no. Granlin's been hot from outside tonight. He missed that one. And that was a great change of pace right there, just switching to the zone, something a little bit different, a change up here late in the game. Clock rolling near, four minutes left. Bradford with the ball down by one. A reset with 10 seconds left. R.T. Stapleton, the junior from Chicago, works it to his left. No good, and a foul called as Hill was going up for the rebound, and it's heading the other way. Good for all your game day fun with BigSouthStore.com. Longwood, a one-point lead in the ball with four minutes left, trying to secure the Big South regular season championship. Radford trying to pick up its fourth straight win, looking for some momentum riding into the tournament coming up in a couple of weeks in Charlotte. And you can see Longwood right here. They're running, they're running a shooter on the baseline, a two-guard front. And turned it over. Perkins couldn't handle the pass. A little off the mark. Trey Wilson and Justin Dalton with you from Willett Hall here in the heart of Virginia in Farmville. Stapleton, left side of the lane, down to the corner. Rayvon Mangum dribbles back out, 10 seconds to shoot. R.T. Stapleton, a deep three-point try. Too strong off the back of the iron, but Jules is there for the offensive rebound. Back out for Hart. No, back-to-back -back three-pointers no good. It's out of bounds. Goes to Longwood. It's a last touch by Stapleton. You know, this is a Longwood team that came in with a one of the top offensive rebounding teams in the Big South. They average about 13 a game. They are the number one offensive rebounding team in the Big South. They've not had a ton of them tonight. In fact, Radford's right behind them in offensive rebounds. And after that last possession, they're actually tied. Seven offensive boards apiece. So Radford's been able to pick up a few more than it normally would. And they've also limited Longwood's second chance opportunities. And credit Radford's defense right there, just because one or Longwood's defense. 25 points Saturday against Hampton. He's also the league's sixth leading rebounder, though he's 6'4 and a guard for Longwood. He finds the ball. Jeffers still out there. And you can see with, with Longwood switching everything and then hedging, uh, showing Hall with the five man, Rafford's slipping everything. So that it just makes so much more. Big shot oh, wow. by Josiah Jeffers. It, it's just so much more ground that you have to cover. So with with Radford, they're doing a really good job of turning these corners. A whistle off the ball, and the officials getting together near the scoring table. They're going to head to the replay monitor. And they're going to. I think they're taking a look to see if that shot was a three. Going to take a look to see if there was a foot on the line. So jo Josiah Jeffers, he's playing now with. Four fouls. He's got nine points tonight. Just hit his second three-pointer of the ball game. Three of three from the floor. In fact, Bradford tonight's shooting 52% from the floor, and they're 10 of 18 from outside. They're going to call that a two. So they overturned the three-point shot. Let's see if we can get another replay of what the officials just saw. Jeffers backing up, backing down Wilkins. 
And yeah, he had a toe on the circle right there around Williamsburg on the Virginia <laughs> map there. Yeah, I, I guess you get less points shooting from Williamsburg instead of, uh, you know, more traditional three-point spot like Roanoke or Southwestern Virginia. The shape of Virginia, if you're shooting it from Roanoke or, say, Radford <laughs> on the shape of Virginia, that's about a 75-foot shot on this court. I mean, that's, uh, they say that's where the, the shooters come from, so. <laughs> so a two-point Longwood lead after the three-pointer is turned back to a two. After the review, trying to get the call right here with just two minutes and 15 seconds left. And you see Radford's, Radford's back in man-to-man -man now. So again, showing hard on these ball screens. They don't want to allow any type of penetration. Houston nearly lost it. In fact, he fell onto the bench. Ended up back behind the bench. Back out on the court now. He's open for three. Got it. Houston, after falling through the bench, steps back up and buries a three-pointer. It's a five-point long lead. Great shot by Houston. Credit, credit Wilkins for the you know, catch and drive hard for the assist. Turnover. Houston's got the steal. It's big possession right here for Radford. You don't want to go down three possessions right here. You got to lock in. 90 seconds to play. Five point lead for Longwood. This place is. Filled with a ton of energy tonight. Yet again, another sellout crowd at Willett Hall. Justin Hill, five seconds to shoot. Down the right side of the lane, drops it down. Justin Hill's got 16 points. And his Lancers have a seven point lead. And that was a great job. The one point game. Isaiah Wilkins, after a couple of free throws went down for him, Drayvon Mangum hit a three pointer of the buzzer to send that game to overtime. The Lancers had to take that road victory with an extra frame. Under a minute to play. Williams step back three, off the mark. Hill tips around the rebound. Stayed with by Stapleton and he's fouled. R.T. Stapleton, second chance try for Radford and he'll make his way to the free throw line. And, and credit Stapleton, he's been playing extremely tough in there. He's gotten his hand on several, several offensive rebound opportunities. This kind of messed things up for, for Longwood. He's definitely just battled and battled. R.T. Stapleton, Jr., transferred from Lewis University. He's been on fire here of late. 17 points a game his last three, including 19 points last week against Campbell. Hits the first foul shot here. He's hit the ball in his hands a lot tonight, but he's not put up the same volume of scoring that he's had in recent games. He's just two of eight from the floor. He's now got six points. And, and credit him, he's, he's got six assists. But once he makes that pass, he's diving hard, trying to get offensive rebounds. Hits both foul shots, give him seven for the night. A five-point game. Wilkins trying to get it in, calls a timeout. And you can see right there where Radford's quickness is able to, again, offset some of you know, Longwood's strength, especially at the guard position. Radford can, can match Longwood step for step and be able to, with the pressure. So that's something that Radford's showing here late. Sometimes, even if a press isn't that much of a problem for you, like Longwood, because the whole game they've been playing zone and half court man to man, it's a little bit just different look that you have to react to. One timeout left for Longwood, two timeouts left for Radford, with 50 and a half seconds left. Five point game. Lancers will inbound under the basket. They just check to make sure, even after the call timeout, Wilkins can still move the baseline. Lancers will set up under the basket. Harris Nichols drawing up some plays for his team. Well, one of his assistants drawing up some plays. He looks on from his bench. And this is issue for Coach Aldridge right here. Sending a couple guys long, coming right back. Wilkins using that movement on the baseline to get it in. And Justin Hills fouled. He dribbles across half court. Longwood's one of the top foul shooting teams in the Big South. There's not a lot of guys out there you can look to right now to put on the line who are not good foul shooters. Look at the season numbers. By the way, that's only the sixth foul in Radford, so they'll have to foul again. But you look at the, the foul shooters, Justin Hill, 78%. Perkins is out there. He's 71%. Deshaun Wade's over 80%. Watson, or it's actually in Carrium, who's out there right now. He's fouled. Now, that's interesting because Leslie and Carrium this season 
is a 63% foul shooter, but when you look at it, in Carrium shot 55% from the free throw line the first 13 games of the season. Over the last 11 games, he's shooting 82% from the line. That is quite an in-season turnaround for the big man. Yeah, and that right there, you can just attribute to work. And, and Carrium's definitely you know, been in the gym uh, working hard on those free throws, and that's just something that takes reps. This is his first trip to the line tonight. He's got four points in this game. And he misses the front end, so an empty possession for Longwood. A five-point game. Radford's got the ball with 40 seconds left. From the corner, three-pointer. Off the mark. Rebound tipped around and grabbed by who else? Isaiah Wilkins. And a foul called. He'll head to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Radford got a look. Yeah, and, and Williams is the one that you'd want to have that look. Yeah, he's the leading scorer tonight. He's you know, three for, he was three for seven from, from the three. And he's been a matchup problem for them for them this evening. So that's, you can't complain with that. Sometimes it's just about makes and misses. Isaiah Wilkins to the line, 80% foul shooter for the season. Wilkins one for one on foul shots tonight. He's got nine points. Makes the front end. He's been called on a lot to try and put away games this season for Longwood from the line. Been clutched late in games. He's had some big three-point shots in the final minutes of games as well to help put away some teams. He splits the pair, goes one for two. Lead is six for Longwood with 30 seconds left. It's still a two-possession game, so you don't have to rush. Three-pointer try. Good! Also, Radford puts in... It's defensive unit. Well, try the inbound pass to Justin Hill, and then he's fouled by Stapleton. With 21.2 seconds left. And that was a great job by Radford being aware to that the inbounder can pass the ball out of bounds and not committing a violation. And then guarding the inbounder once he stepped inbounds. So that's th that was a really good reaction by them and for and credit coach Aldrich for drawing that up that's something that you don't see people do a lot of big foul shot here for Justin Hill one and one is a ninth team foul for Radford and he's short so with a one possession game Radford's got the ball trying for another seven point comeback in the final minute they did it earlier this season three pointer off the mark second try contact Joseph can't get it to go Pardon me, that was Williams who couldn't get the shot to go and a foul call with seven seconds to play. And if you're Radford again, that's that's what you want. You, you got the miss, you come down, you get an open shot, uh, a shot that Jefferson just hit earlier. So yeah, the game's still not over. We're talking about seven seconds, anything can happen here. It's still one and uh, actually two now shots. Two now. shots, yeah. Double bonus down for Longwood. It's the 10th team foul. On Radford, Justin Hill has a chance to try and ice it. He's heading over toward the bench to grab a towel for a moment. Assist to Jesper Gramlin, and now Hill ready to go. Two shots for Justin Hill. Got the first two-possession game. 7.2 to play, or a four-point game. We'll take a three-pointer and a foul for Radford. Coach Aldridge is saying no threes right now. You'll give up a two, give up a layup, no threes. Second foul shot for Hill. Got them both. 71-66. Justin Hill's got 18 points. Leading scorer in this game. Last try for Radford. And thrown away out of bounds. Lancer Ball with 1.8 seconds left. The five-point lead. Justin Hill and the Lancers can feel it now. They're on the verge of the Big South regular season title. Five-point game, two seconds left. Wilkins gets it into Hill, and they'll let it run out. The Longwood 